In our last video, you saw us cut the heel end of the stem off again, a little bit further up than it was previously, and we've cut also the forward end of the keel off that was in very bad condition, and uh, the top of the keel's got some checking in it that we're gonna soak some uh, epoxy down into just to stop it from checking any worse. And uh, the, some other things we've had to do here, we had to cut the floor timbers up out of the way so that we can slide our new timber that reinforces this keel on top of the keel and in between the heel ends of the frames. So I've cut the heel ends of the frames vertically out of the way and the floor timbers horizontally out of the way. So now we're able to take a pattern of that timber. We've been set out here to make a profile pattern of the timber that we have to make. And the first thing I did was I took a piece of aluminum rule. It's just a yard stick here. It was conveniently the right size and I slipped it in between the keel and the floor timbers like so. And I had this thing propped right up into position exactly right and the way I knew that I had done that was I recorded the position of the rabbit line by using a spiling. Now this is just a hacksaw blade, but I put it against the rabbit line and I drew a line alongside of it up here and a line across the end of it, like a little radius here. And I've done that every so often. So I've spiled the rabbit line up onto the planking that I'm not gonna remove. That records the rabbit line throughout the entire position of this timber. Now, I've taken that rule and put it in there and I've made some spilings from the top of the keel onto the aluminum rule and also from the bottom of the floor timbers onto the aluminum rule by using a piece of wood and a pencil. And then what I've done was I've removed that and I've transferred that onto the first piece of this pattern. Now I'm making this pattern in two pieces. It was very easy to make this in one piece that fits in between there and then fit it into position and whittle at it a little bit and then I made the forward piece separate and then I glued them together. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip it right into position and show you how it fits. And uh, it slides right down in alongside the uh, keel bolts and right into position like so. Now this is actually propped right up against it like that when the, when the job is complete. So that is a timber that we're going to make. Now as you can see, there's a curvature to this uh, pattern. And that curvature has to get transferred onto a mold that we're going to bend our piece of wood over. We're actually going to bend a piece of oak to this shape. And the reason for that is so that we won't have any grain going diagonally across the timber because it'd be vulnerable to breaking anywhere that grain slices across that timber in an odd way. So that's exactly what the pattern is for, so that we can transfer the pattern off onto a mold that we're gonna bend our piece of wood over, and that's exactly what we're gonna do, and we're gonna go over to where we're steaming it right now. Now we've removed the pattern that we've made, this profile pattern from the boat, and I've obviously traced it off onto this piece of three by right here to make a mold to bend our piece of wood to. And that's exactly what we're doing. We've got it steaming right now. Now there it is. It's a nice piece of white oak in a plastic bag. We've got it sitting on top of our mold. It's already in position. We're steaming it at present. We're just using a little pot burner with some water and a little gas to uh, create some steam. And you can see the steam pumping out the end of the bag. It's uh, been steaming for an hour or so now. It's just about ready to bend. And we can start pulling on it before it really is totally limber just to see what it's like. And if it just goes down cooperatively, well, that's great. And if it doesn't, we'll wait a little bit longer. But I think it's going to clamp down. So really there isn't too much to it other than just picking up a couple of clamps and putting them on, sliding them into position, and twisting it right down. And that's as far as we're going to get with that one. Pick up one more. Doesn't really matter too much where we put it. Stick it right there. This is obviously the position of the thing that's uh, got the most bend in it right here. So we've got the clamps on both sides of that bend. You can see that we've had to use a number of clamps to pull it down nice and tight. Now the clamps will actually run out of thread and uh, we won't be able to get any more out of them. So we'll just take another clamp and continue on with that clamp. And then when this one becomes loose, we back it off and use that one again. And that's how we go about it.
And there you have it. It's pretty much clamped all the way down against its form. And now we're just going to let it steam a little bit longer before we shut the steam off. That's the advantage to this type of steaming is, is that you don't pull it out of a steam box and then lose all your heat while you're trying to bend it. We've got the same amount of heat right now as when we started, and we're going to continue that way. And that's going to help it take a nice set so that when we unclamp it, it won't have any recall.